Welcome, Dominique. I am so happy to have you here. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Always happy to share what what's helped me in my life. So I'm really excited about this topic because I think sometimes when you have a metaphysic, me, metaphysical summit, the focus is so inward that we forget about the outward expression as well. So we're going to talk mm -hmm. about the creativity and the painting and how that relates to intuition, which is super fun. Um, before we do that, though, just introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what you do. Great. Well, I'm Dominique Hurley, and today I'm focusing on being an intuitive visionary artist. So I channel and do energy work through my artwork, paintings like the ones at the back. But basically everything I've done is under the umbrella of my life purpose, which is to travel the world exploring and expressing my love of beauty and the beauty of love. So I also do photography, videography, teaching, blogging, and uh, created what you were saying before about intuition, I call it the intuition into action treasure map, five steps to a happy, healthy life. So actually bringing that intuition into a practical everyday living. That's perfect. So we're gonna talk about tips for the, the intuitive who might feel a little hesitant about how to connect in and talk about that through the, the creative expression as well. So why don't you just, we're just gonna jump right in and talk about some of the things that you've encountered as a teacher um, around the concept of intuition and creativity. Mm -hmm. Well, I really, before we even start that, just wanna like emphasize how creativity is a gateway to intuition, but intuition is a gateway also to creativity. Like they go together, they flow together. And so even if people are like, thinking, well, I'm not an artist, so I'm, I'm not gonna listen to this summit, I'm just gonna do the first 30 seconds, stay. <laughs> like, if you if you were moved to even turn this on, think there's a reason that I'm here and explore finding it out, because this is not just about intuitive painting. This is an example of how it works in life, and it's taught me so much and given me the courage to do so in, in real life. Awesome, yeah, and I can say myself, although my, my canvas is not paint, my canvas is the written word. So mm -hmm. you can extract from this and take to your creative outlet. It does not have to be necessarily painting or even writing. It could be gardening living. or cooking. Or even living. Yeah, mm -hmm. intuitive living um, is, is a favorite topic of mine. So yeah. yes, so you wanna head into the uh, challenges mm -hmm. that I've, I've seen and, or I've encountered. Well, the first one is, well, I don't know where to start. You know, like people are terrified of a blank canvas and it's the same in life that perfectionism paralysis, you know, they're, they're like, I don't know where to start, so I'm not going to start at all. And um, so the way I like to start any project that I'm doing, whether I'm blogging or painting is through some sort of opening ceremony. And so every time I start a new canvas, I smudge myself, I light a candle, I, um, call in my team of divine helpers and I will put like holy water that I collected either in Lord this summer or in uh, Glastonbury and just put that on the blank canvas and with my hands rub that into the canvas and focus on my intentions and ask for help in that intentions and ask for my team to work through me because all my work I mean I look at some things and I don't know how I did it it came through me and through the energy work that I was doing at the time. And then it's just, it blows my mind. Um, and also the same in life is when I'm stuck, for example, before this summer, I was just kind of like, mm, and I asked for guidance and I got this guidance. And it, it basically asks you to stretch your comfort zones and to, um, and to grow, because that's what intuition is. It's an invitation to grow more into who you always were right to emerge more fully as your true self so when i like i like to start uh, on a canvas with that setting intention doing some sort of ceremony and you don't have to do it the way i do it do it in your own way find your own way to connect to the divine whatever that is for you and 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 then start and the beauty about intuitive painting is that it's um there are no mistakes you can't do anything wrong because like the painting behind me, there's about 20 layers of paint on that. I was doing chakra healing energy work. So there's, you know, every chakra I was doing energy healing, painting, words, colors, and all sorts of things. And so it all informs the final, just like in life, right? Everything you do informs who you are today, even if you don't understand what it meant at the time. Just trust that every piece of the puzzle 
helps create the beauty and love that you are, you know? So even the challenges, they're working for you. And so where do you start? By starting and by calling in. So in my uh, Intuition Into Action treasure map, that's like ask, step one, ask. Um, and because our guides are here to help us, but if we don't ask, they won't interfere the whole thing about free will. So that's the big challenge. One big challenge is where do I start? That's so beautiful because as you're talking, like the connections for me visually are coming through and how to transfer that. Like if you don't know where to start, and again, you're not going to use paint or you're not going to use some kind of textile. The life, the day, the day that you're living is your canvas. So to and through are two different vantage points as well. Like if I need to receive information to me, it might feel startling, but if you're receiving it through you, you know, shifting your POV might help with that sort of stark, oh my gosh, I don't know where to start. You know, it has to come to me and then I have to put it out there versus you're talking about you're the vehicle for through, yes. correct? Yeah, and intuitive living is the same. Um, I'm someone who doesn't like change. <laughs> and uh, you wouldn't be able to tell if you looked at my resume because if I'm guided, nothing will stop me because I've learned to trust 100%. And I have lived and worked on three continents, five provinces. And so for someone who's in Canada, I'm in Canada, Newfoundland. And so for someone who doesn't like change, it, you know, it's a constant stretch of those zones, but it's about taking one inspired action at a time to see where that leads. Because when you, you you don't think, but if you do trust, there's all these steps. And I talk a lot more in my free gift, which is that 75 minute tutorial on the five steps to a happy, healthy life, the intuition into action treasure map. But the if you take that step, doors will open with the resources you need and the next step will reveal itself. And that's actually sort of the second challenge that uh, comes up with my, my clients or in classes or, or in my own studio practice is, um, you know, I don't know what to paint. Like, what do I paint? And, and there's a, a technical and there's a, a aspect to that. And, but there's also just the process part of that is you don't have to know. That's the beauty of intuitive painting is you just start layer by layer um, and, and the concept might evolve as you're playing, you know? Like you don't have to know 10 steps ahead of time, which is sometimes hard. That was great training for me because I have an extremely strong left brain, left side. And so just being able to do one layer for the fun of it and playing and different tools. And I, I play a lot with um, mark making. Uh, so like using different tools that do different patterns and stuff. And so using that kind of thing, you know, I'm just playing. I get into the mood. I get into the here and now. And then I get inspiration or I do something and then I look at it while I'm dancing on my mini trampoline and kind of like, hmm, what do you want to become? And it's the same. What does my day want to become? What does my week want to become what does my life want to become so I, you know sometimes it takes contemplation time stepping back and just looking at it objectively and also connecting to your team of divine helpers and asking and sometimes mostly i paint things that i see with my eyes closed not what i see with my eyes open i couldn't look at a scenery and paint what's there it's just not me <laughs> but what I get is I get visions and then from there I translate them because there's no way I could paint them the way I see them and and so but it doesn't even have to be something specific it might be you might be working with symbols and stuff but then in the final layer all that's just behind energetically but the visual may not even be something it might just be color movement texture you know letting go of perfectionism letting go of things should be the shoulda woulda coulda like you're just Focus on what you love and let go of what you don't and then just sort of see what wants to emerge. Because sometimes you'll look at something and it's like, oh, that reminds me, I'll say, of an elephant. I never painted an elephant, but let's just say an elephant. That's what I just saw. And then, you know, paint an elephant and see if you like it or see if it's, you know, just going to end up in that background. That might be covered up with something else. So when you cover up, you don't like blank 
white the whole thing and paint on top is it just adds like you can tell in the one behind me here there's a lot of color and depth and texture and detail but it's every layer adds that depth and it just becomes something eventually and sometimes that takes longer than others and sometimes it's done in a few hours and you're happy with it you know would you say that helping your clients ask different questions is part of the process for example you know i don't know what to paint or i don't know where to start or you know i don't see anything could translate to what are you curious about mm. what do you feel trying to get them out of the head and more into the sensorial aspect that's the absolute key is getting them out of their head intuitive painting i find or any studio work is a perfect mirror right for that inner process so it's about the inner process and the outer result but or the outer process or the outer but a lot of it is just an observation of your own self-talk like when you're asking yourself i don't know what to paint okay so what are you afraid of you know or or what wants to come or yes just as what you said what are you curious about or just look at your canvas and like what did you like doing Focus, the law of polarity for me is a big one in the universal laws. It's like, focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. And then, you know, the, the scale will start tipping that way. There's a guide to the universal laws that the my guides had taught me. And I did a series of mandalas while I was learning from my guides what these laws were. So all that's in the free resources on my website. But the law of polarity is all about aiming for what you want. And eventually you're going in that direction. But if you keep focusing on, the fear of I don't know, I don't know, or I don't like, I don't like, then you're going to stay there. And so often it's getting back in that childhood, and this is to intuitive living as well, that childlike um, curiosity and wonder, you know, that curiosity that you're talking about, but also the wonder of like, wow, um, I really I had fun doing these little dots. Well, I'm going to keep doing dots for a few more hours for just the fun of it, not even knowing where it's going and you don't need to know. So it's letting go of that need to having to know. I mean, in our era, more than ever, we have to let go of that need to know because there are so many unknowns and creativity is the way to live your life in a way that will, you know, constantly emerge and change and flow, go with the flow. But being aware of yourself, what's happening inside of you, being aware of what's outside of you, and allowing that to, you know, work together with the help of your team. So before we go on to just a couple more things that you've experienced, I just want to pause for a second and address the viewer and say, check in with how you're feeling at this point. Because as someone who doesn't paint myself, I'm looking at these gorgeous canvases behind you. And what I notice might come up is I can't do that. Like you're, even though you're hearing what you're saying yeah. out of poorly, the sensation might be, I can't do that. So you're sort of shutting yourself down. So <laughs> oh, let me address that. I'd love to address pause that. Pause for a moment and just be aware of what you're hearing versus what your inner self is saying. And can we just sort of you know, pause around that for a second, just address that. Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, I've been doing that since the 80s. So, and you don't want to be painting what I paint. You want your voice to be expressed, right? So it'll come out very differently, but I do have the guide to intuitive painting, which is also free on my website and the resources. But I mean, I do this with kindergarten classes and I'm gonna show you what I do like sometimes in schools. So if they can do it, um, they have an advantage. They don't have a lot of the inner talk that we have uh, developed in that fear of what others will say, which is often what you're saying to yourself, instead of giving this as an opportunity to love. Most of my paintings, and you will see this because on my blogs, I often show the process. And there's usually a stage of what, uh, an awkward stage in my paintings, not always, but sometimes. And my colleague, Flora Boli calls this the awkward teenager stage. And it's basically, if you have teenagers, you probably know what I'm talking about, or you were a teenager at some point, you have to love yourself as you're like going through this awkward stage of trying to figure out who you are. And the only way to allow your teenager to grow fully into who they are is to 
accept, love, nurture. And that's what you need to do to your painting when it's at that stage. But I'm going to show you something. That's sort of the third challenge I was going to talk about is a lot of people are saying, well, it always turns out like mud, you know? So here's, here's the technical aspect of that is if you start with the warm colors first, let it dry and then add cool colors on top the colors will stay pure so what happens and i had a little color wheel right here what happens in painting is if you use the colors that are right across from each other and you mix them they'll all turn out brown they'll all turn out like mud so use the warm colors first and let them dry or the cool colors, whichever, it doesn't matter. Then do the other ones. And this is just all through mark making. Let those dry. And then you glaze on top of that, which is like a transparent paint. You can do different colors. And then you start building with black and white. And you glaze on top of that. And then you just end up building this image. And this is something that, you know, I was doing with kids in class. But of course, not this one. This is one I was doing. But I always encourage people to do what they want instead of trying to copy something that is already. I mean, I almost failed art in high school because I couldn't do what the teacher wanted me to do. But a few years later, she invited me back for a solo exhibition because I had found my voice, my medium. You know, acrylic paint might not be your thing. Um, and the beauty with acrylics is they dry really fast versus the oils. And so, you know, find what it is that you love to express. But anyone can do this kind of thing and just play with the technical stuff is on my website. But the other thing is loving yourself through the process and just seeing the layers of your self-talk and your experience and knowing when you need to step away and let yourself dry before adding another layer, go for a walk in nature or uh, do something that, you know, step away if you're getting so, you know, and just notice like, wow, I'm being really hard on myself. Where is that coming from? And transformative art is not about diving into the darkness and, and analyzing it to bits. It's just like, oh, okay, this is here. How can I bring light and love to this to, to bring it out? Well, as you're talking to, I'm seeing the, the way in which we can take those, just the concepts of building and process in the artwork. And to me, I was like turning and facing that toward my life and, and asking myself, what am I going to start with? Just where am I going to start in my day intuitively? Like for this is new to intermediate intuitive. So they're like trying to get into that inner realm and make sense of it. Um, so what am I starting with? Maybe light and, and dark or different colors are clairsentience, clairaudience, clairvoyance. Like where am I going to start? How am I going to let that dry? Meaning just relax and be patient a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what am I going to build on next? And where am I going to go next? So everything you're saying, yeah. I find you can directly translate to just the intuitive living. Yeah, absolutely. One inspired step at a time. The key is, like I've talked about the asking and I've talked about, or I haven't, but accessing your, your intuition as you're painting, things will come up. You'll, you know, you'll access through various channels, symbolism, whatever comes up. Uh, sometimes you need to analyze. It's like, oh, why did I think of an elephant? Why, what's that coming for in, in my process, you know? So sometimes it's, intuition is often like, bang, by eight drums. It's like, oh, okay. And so, you know, I ended up painting eight drums and they financed my room and board at an ashram for the summer for two months in Italy. So it was like, you know, okay, thank you. <laughs> so sometimes it's like, bang, like that, your intuition. But sometimes you get things in your environment or on your day or something crosses your path and you know it has meaning, but you can't quite figure out what that is. And so step three was analyze. Step four is act. And this is like for many years, people have been asking me since the 80s, okay, talk, how do you live this way? How do you do this? And so that's why I, I used to have three steps and just, but the action, the intuition into action is so important because guidance without action is useless, you know? And, uh, and so it, once you take that inspired step, and then allow, like go on that walk if that's what you're being guided to. And then just be curious, that childlike curiosity and wonder, I can't speak highly enough about it. You know, it's like, okay, why did I get moved to turn right instead of turn left? And it's like, oh, look, there's my friend. You know, you never, never know. And then 
every day gets filled with miracles if you explore and express and, and approach it like a game. It doesn't have to be all serious and dramatic, you know, just explore. And sometimes you'll be guided to do things and you may not know for a year, two years, 10 years, why you ended up taking that course or why you ended up moving somewhere. And sometimes you'll never know, but you have to trust. I mean, I don't know how many times 10 years later, someone says, you know, when you said this or did this, it changed my life. It's like, I don't remember that at all. But you were brought somewhere to do something, to be something in a way that has an impact on those around you. So it's not always about yourself because we're all interconnected, right? And so it's trusting that those inspired actions, be it on your canvas or uh, in your life or in whatever creative endeavor you're doing, it's having an impact on you and on everything around you. So how often when you're guiding clients to go to that step of action, do the first one, two or three challenges interrupt that pattern? For example, I don't know what I'm doing. It isn't right. It looks like mud, which interrupts the flow of moving into that inspired yeah. action. Oh, that's just an opportunity to say, all right, so what do you need right now to let go of that pattern that's coming back? You know, how can you love yourself and your painting through that? And it's like, because, you know, in my classes, I've taught how like there are no mistakes. And it's really hard when you you almost like something, but you don't want to risk ruining it. I don't know how many times like hmm, this painting was better three layers, three or four layers ago. <laughs> but it's like, it's part of the process. And it's just reminding people that there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. And you know, you do something you don't like on the canvas, it's like, hmm, okay, so try something else. What's your next inspired action? And if that self-talk, that negative self-talk, is just a mirror. It's like, so if your best friend was talking to yourself the way, I did this with a little girl, she was maybe seven years old. The look she gave me, I said, if if your best if you if you saw your best friend talking to herself the way that what you just said, how would you feel? What would you say? And her whole expression changed, and it was just like, and and, and then she started painting and having fun, and it was just like wow. So the the voice, the fear voice, like even at seven years old, she had this fear of maybe something she heard a parent say or a teacher say or like you know you draw between the lines or whatever you know like we just we suck all this up and then we repeat right but what would your higher self say now that we're adults we can like what would your higher self say to you right now mm -hmm. so bring it back to them don't take on the savior aspect like i'm really not into rescuing people but about helping them connect to their intuition so what what would your guide say right now what, what would your you know, Jesus, Buddha, whoever you're into. Well, one of the reasons specifically that I wanted to have you on is because I can see, and I hope others can take this as well, from the process of painting can be extracted the challenges that they're seeing. So for example, as you're speaking and you're like, there's no mistakes. And then we get into that, but there are mistakes. I made a mistake, you know, type of attitude. If somebody was going into tarot card readings or mm -hmm. Akashic readings, and they're a new person working with a client and they see something and then they say something and the client gets upset and they say, oh, there's a mistake. However, if you go, I think if you go through the process that you're guiding clients through on canvas first, it feels like a, or or whatever medium you want, it feels like a safer place to explore psychically the experience of making a mistake. So mm -hmm. while you're doing that, if you can think about, you know, these new intuitives can think about how they're going to share their gifts and, or if they're sharing them now and they come across a situation that they perceive as a mistake, I didn't read the cards right. My client walked away. Nobody's signing up for my services. It appears to be a mistake. But if you explore it more gently in art, it feels like you might be a little bit more, a little stronger in in not perceiving it as a mistake through the experiential learning of your when you're taking that action. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, yes, intuitive painting for me gave me courage. Mm -hmm. this this picking up and moving around the world to do a whole bunch of different things that I'm being guided to if if I 
didn't have what was happening in the studio, it, it, I don't know if I would have had the courage to do that kind of thing. So it's opened me. It's made me more curious. As I said, I grew up, um, well, I grew up in a military family where mother, father, brother, like it's military family and I have a very strong left brain. I, that was very well developed and nurtured. Our right intuitive sides are not nurtured in our society. It's starting to be a bit more, uh, but certainly not when I was young. And so reclaiming that meant the studio was my practice area. And in terms of, it's it's about listening also when something like that would happen with a client, for example, if you're talking about tarot readings or whatever, just listening, how much of that is their fear? And how much of that was your ego talking versus listening? Like which self are you listening to? The little self, the ego as you're giving your card reading? Or are you inviting the higher self and, and divine spirit to talk through you? Like just reconnecting and then checking in. You know, it's very easy to, to be afraid all of a sudden if you're doing something and it's like, no, this is this this feels right and it's coming from the right place. Take a moment, you know, or ask your client to take a moment to reflect on how it could. Knowing that others are going to react, but it doesn't mean that is true on their side either, right? That might just be what they need to step away and think about it more. But you can't, not everyone will will resonate with what you're saying. Not everyone resonates with, with my artwork. Uh, and then some will spend three hours sitting on a chair in front of a painting crying and processing at an exhibition. It's everyone's different. And so just how you have to, like I had to find my creative voice, either videography, photography, painting, you need to find the way that you and your clients need to find, okay, so tarot's not working for me or this person's not working for me and they'll find another way. So I'm not saying, you know, wash your hands of it. I'll use everything as, as food for thought and contemplation of, okay, how, what went well here? I always start with that. What went well here? And how can I improve next time? Is there a follow-up that I need to do on this person or this particular painting or, you know, or is this one complete? Mm -hmm. It'll never be perfect, but is it complete? And and then move on to, to the next. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. And the other question I have is how often when you're working with your clients, do you find that they start out with one relationship and I'm a, a recovering perfectionist. So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. That term too. <laughs> Um, when I first started writing, because writing is my canvas, so when I first started writing, I found that the impulse to write to please, do I get the words right, do I sound like the right message, was super strong. And the more I wrote and the more I confidence I grew, the less I cared about what, if I was doing the right words. So when you're working with your clients, do you find that there's there's a, a journey through the relationship that maybe they're not even articulating at the beginning. Like, am I am I painting blue because my husband likes blue or my partner likes blue? And if I do blue, then they're gonna like this. And then finally getting to, well, I don't really like blue. I wanna start with yellow. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, a thousand answers to that question are coming through. <laughs> uh, let's start with one. Definitely everyone's experience is going to be completely different, right? So it's always being aware in the moment of what's arising in a room for someone and giving them space to, to work with that inner process. Some people like to share, some people don't. Um, and, and when it comes to intuition, like I also do intuitive readings, but it's like channeling a, a Disney Pixar movie and I record it's a one hour story that comes with visuals. And there, I have a client, for example, who's done three or four, and in the beginning, you know, she said it took about six months to go through the story and, and implement it in her life uh, because she has to do the interpretation. I never tell a, a client um, this means this because they are the best to interpret what symbolism mean. And my work is always to help people develop their own intuition. So I'm, I'm not one to do the kind of psychic reading where it's very specific. Um, and so the but then after her third or fourth, she was saying, you know, I within a few weeks, I'd figured out the whole story. Her intuition had become stronger. So the more that they're actually working, I often do workshops, but not over a long period of time, but they might come back, you know, for another workshop years later or something like that. And that relationship with the canvas or with themselves through the canvas just gets more 
mm, developed. <laughs> I can't. I don't know how to express it, but gets more um, in tune. You know, there's more opportunity. I mean, just look at myself in the studio in the last. I've been doing this, as I said, since the '80s, and it's just a very different. There's so much more trust. You know, so much more trust. And I've learned to trust that sometimes a painting doesn't resonate with me at all. And it's often the first one to sell because it wasn't for me. I wasn't doing it for my chakras. I was doing it for whatever they needed. And I was being, you know, guided somehow for that person who happened to show up that weekend at the fair who, you know, I didn't even sign that painting. This was years back. I hadn't even signed it because I wasn't even sure I was going to show it. But she spotted it in the box before I even unpacked my table. And it was just, I need that. I was like, okay. So it's to trust that, you know, of course you're going to get better. My paintings are so much better than they were 10 years ago. And you take trainings and I still take courses. I spent the summer in a transformative art program, certification program, simply for the joy of it. And that's going to affect everything I do. So, yeah. I'm, I'm one, other, one other point on before we sort of wrap up with any other points you want to add to that is that like as you're talking again, I, I just think this is such it's such a deep, rich, important conversation about canvas and paint and creativity. It's just there's so much in what we just said that uh, someone could extract. But like when you are if you're a new intuitive reader, let's say you're doing psychic readings. And just like you said, you did a painting that you're like, I don't really resonate with that painting. If you get an idea that you don't resonate with necessarily is because it isn't for you. It's for the client. It's for the person who's going to read your blog post. It's for the, you know what I mean? It's like, because I think sometimes as new psychics or new readers, we think everything has to be explainable to us. Like if I get an idea, it has to make sense to me. It's most likely not going to make sense mm -hmm. to you because it's not for you. Yeah, well, I, I write, uh, there was, I did a whole series of 26, and, and again, on my free resources, um, I called them uh, Love Oracles, and it was three paintings, and it was a whole text, sort of like a, 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 you know, an oracle card with a text, and so people would choose which one they liked out of the three, and then they would read the text, but I mean, everyone who read that same text would interpret it differently based on what's going on in their life, right, so that's where the power, you know, you're there to empower others, you're not there to be like, I know the answers. So you're there as one of the many tools for them. Like a, I call them intuitive hearing aids because sometimes accessing your intuition, if you're in a state of stress or anxiety, it's like static on the phone line. You can't hear it. You need an intuitive hearing aid. And that's what the canvas is. That's what intuitive readings are. That's what tarot readings are. It's to help the other to empower themselves, not to take the power away. And um, yeah, so I think like in terms of, of uh, last words of wisdom that I would have is that intuitive, your intuition and your creativity are things that you were born with. It's our birthright. We had it. It was trained out of us uh, and other skills and that, you know, don't knock the left brain. We need that. That's the action part of it. But to have the leadership from the intuition, we just need is like any muscle, right? You want to develop your muscles, you go to the gym, but you don't go only once because <laughs> that's not going to do anything. So it's good to be able to, um, uh, develop those through practice. And the more you play with both your intuition and your creativity, they become gateways to each other and they strengthen each other. And the Intuition Interaction Treasure Map, which is your free gift, uh, if you register for that, it's a 75-minute tutorial. I go more into the Claire's. I go more into a few exercises for you to be able to, to see which is your channel that's, that's most most open because it doesn't matter if you're painting or writing or doing other things and it's the same it doesn't matter which channel is yours as long as you're getting the messages right and so it's not about comparing your painting to anybody else's or your channel or the way that you get your messages or express them to anybody else's right so it's about finding your gifts and how to share them and whether that's in the studio or in your life i wish you the very best with them one more, more, more point. Well, I can't. Uh, one more point that I want to kind of just sort of bring back in here before we kind of push the stop button. Um, you said you worked with young kids. Super, super, in my in opinion, important because I work with preschool schoolers as well. I started out in standardized education. I work now in an environment that has more of a free flow. 
and directly to the listeners, if you went to public school or a public institution, you were trained in a standard. And that standard, I believe, interrupts the natural free, free flow that Dominique is trying to recover and, and rekindle for you guys. Um, it absolutely is one of the biggest roadblocks to just connecting immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so just know that that is an interrupt um, as you're going about this process, but it isn't something you can't get around. You can obviously sure. get around it. Yeah, you build your muscles. You build your intuitive mm -hmm. muscles by yeah. by practicing, by by playing with them, by, yeah, going through the steps. Um, so I encourage everyone to get a hold of you in the Facebook group. Again, this is this is a working, you know, working in the clay summit. So mm -hmm. viewers, connect with Dominique if you feel inspired to go to your you know get your free gift connect with you as a practitioner hashtag some word you know or tag you in the Facebook group and yeah. my all those free resources it's like I've been just putting everything there for years and you know find your way and actually it's funny because someone was saying uh, can you give us like this worksheet of like how to like there's so much on your website where do i go it's like follow your intuition that's what you're trying to develop see what attracts you and go there and trust that you're there for a reason so mm -hmm. yeah my website or any any way that i can help you um reach out because i think some of the first steps feel easy because they're finding you here if they haven't already known about you but if they find you here sometimes we go to the first place that we connect with somebody. So go to the Facebook group, ask you a question, just say, yeah. I think everything looks like mud. And then you can answer, you can connect, you can guide um, that person. But what I really want this to go beyond is just this two dimensional thing that passed through their life. Yes. One yeah. week, and then they go back to the struggles. Like, you don't have to go back to the struggle, just connect. Um, you and know, we need start. constant refreshers, you know, uh, constant. Yes. Yeah. So myself too. <laughs> absolutely. So thank you. This has been divine. This has been um, essential in my opinion as a creative myself. And for the newbies, y'all just keep one step at a time. It's gonna be okay. Iron step, not a four step, but an inspired right. step. Have fun okay. with it. And I thank you very, very much. Okay. We'll see you next time. Bye, Alison. <laughs>